Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today Chapter 6 has begun for Battlefield 5. It's a little different this time around because if you choose to, you can just buy your way through the entire progression tree, which you could before, but this time it unlocks all the guns in the chapter. So the weekly rewards are no longer going to contain weapons unless DICE has got a little trick up their sleeve for us later on uh, during this chapter, but it's going to last for 12 weeks total. You can get all the rewards now, which will include the Type 11 LMG, the Lunge Mine, and the Bazooka. There's also a bunch of cosmetics and a few melee weapons here and there, but those are the main weapons that will potentially change up your gameplay. The uh, M2 Carbine and the Type 37 Shotgun already came out with the launch of this patch. Now, there's definitely been the pay to win or the pay to unlock lock concerns of this chapter progression tree. Uh, for me personally, I don't care for it because now it's pay to review, right? If I want to get the weapons before anybody else and make a weapon review or talk about the new content, I've got to pay for it, which sucks. I'm not a fan of it personally. As for the effectiveness of the Type 11 LMG being super overpowered or way better and people are going to use it as a pay to win weapon, well, it's not that good. It's decent, it's not bad, it's definitely usable, but it kind of falls into the same category as a Bren type weapon, slower firing, highly accurate, decent at medium and longer ranges. It's got a weird looking magazine that holds 30 rounds, a 510 round per minute rate of fire. And as for the progression tree, I went right side for the quick aim and then full left side to get faster reload, faster muzzle velocity and things like that. You'll probably also want to use a three times optic on here. The iron sights aren't particularly good in my opinion. And since it's better at range, three times seems like it's the way to go. Now, without question, one of the more exciting weapons added with this progression tree is the lunge mine. Fortunately, you get this at tier five. So if you don't want to pay any money, you can get it pretty much right away with just a little bit of playing. You'll have that thing. The lunge mine is very much like a bayonet charge, except with an explosive at the end of it. It'll instantly kill enemy players on impact and it'll even splash damage those around it. So you can get a multi kill with the lunge mine, which is pretty cool. Obviously, it's also intended to take out armored vehicles. I noticed it doing up to 50 damage upon impact. However, there is a bug with the lunch mine right now where it can do as little as five damage to a vehicle upon impact, making it basically worthless. I don't know whether I should laugh or cry by the fact that DICE delayed the lunge mine an entire chapter to iron out its bugs and then it launches with a very substantial bug. It only happened to me once, but I don't know what the frequency of this is because I really didn't impact vehicles all that much while I was playing. So it's possible that it occurs at a relatively regular rate. Something to watch out for. Upon impact, the lunge mine will also deal a little bit of damage back to you, which is possible that it can kill you if your health is low enough. Something I found kind of funny about it or an interesting element is that if you say lunge mine a tank and it's in the middle of a jungle or kind of a dense, crazy, chaotic area, the impact of the lunge mine will knock you down. You do not have to get up right after being knocked down. So you can lay there and a lot of people might actually think you're dead, especially if you just blew up a tank, there's smoke, debris, fire everywhere. It's a good excuse to try and lie still and pretend to be dead, which is an easy thing to do in Battlefield 5. And then look around and decide which targets you want to take out. Uh, I did this a couple times and it's kind of a cool thing. Now, what you want to watch out for the lunge mine and what sets it apart from the bayonet in terms of its mechanics is that you want to watch out for hard surfaces when you're charging. Because if you impact a hard surface, I believe even the ground itself will set off the lunge mine and then, well, you've just knocked yourself on the ground, dealing damage to you and blowing up objects around you and you're kind of disabled for a little bit. So don't look like a fool. Use the lunge mine with that in mind. Works well in open areas, in tight, denser areas where you might have to like turn a corner quickly. Your odds of setting off the lunge mine on something you're not trying to might be a bit higher. Something I'm going to have to test out a bit more is using the lunge mine to open up walls. I used it inside of one of these straw huts on Solomon Islands and it blew off the roof of the hut but didn't open up the wall. So I'm not exactly sure how the wall impact mechanics work or where the damage is dealt, but it might need a little extra refining because that could be a cool mechanic is you see players on the other side of a wall, run into the wall, blow up the whole thing, maybe kill the player on the other side of it or knock them down, then get up and engage them through a new entry point. 
Uh, you can hold only one lunge mine at a time. It's for the support class exclusively, but if you carry an ammo crate, you can resupply the lunge mine using that. Also, don't be afraid to cancel a lunge mine charge, especially if you missed your target and you think you're gonna run into a wall or something else, it's probably safer just to cancel it mid charge, save your lunge mine and maybe save your life as well. Now, generally speaking, the lunge mine definitely seems more like a meme weapon than the most effective competitive thing on the battlefield, but honestly, that's fine. The fact that there's some fun weapons coming into the game that open up the kind of crazy chaotic stuff you can do feels like it's more reminiscent of previous battlefield games and all the crazy wacky mechanics you had in those. The lunge mine is really fun for that. It's gonna fail most of the time you try and do it. In fact, it's probably gonna net tank drivers a lot more kills than they used to be getting because it is really hard to sneak up on a tank, especially on Solomon Islands where it's very laney and tank drivers, as long as they're setting themselves up properly, uh, can pretty accurately predict where enemies are gonna come from. It's hard to get in there, but when you do, it's extremely cool. Not to mention getting infantry kills is just generally hilarious. Now, when it comes to something on this progression tree that actually could be considered pay to win or highly effective compared to its counterparts, I would have to put the bazooka in that category. It's extremely good against armor. Hell, it's pretty darn good against infantry. It has the lowest drop out of any of the rocket launchers in the game, making it great for sniping enemy infantry at a distance. I definitely counter sniped a few snipers with it, but also it means that tanks that are sniping you from across the map are now going to become much easier targets to hit. The travel velocity isn't super fast, but it's good enough to hit any sort of stationary tank sniper. Uh, Hopefully this could change up the balance between tank and infantry in the long run, but it is further down the progression tree, which means you're gonna have to grind for a while to get it or pay money to get it instantly. Tank impacts with it, we're doing anywhere from 19 to 27 damage per shot. You start off with three shots, but if you go to an ammo supply depot, you can top off with five total shots, uh, meaning you can probably solo a tank that isn't getting constantly repaired. So. Uh, you have some pretty good options with this. Again, I think it will change up the meta in the long run. Also, there's a weird little note about this weapon that I didn't really see in effect, but it has, I guess, back blast damage. I don't think it'll cause damage to friendlies, but it might actually cause damage to enemies, and it also has the ability to set off mines and tripwire bombs and stuff like that. Again, I haven't seen this in effect. It's probably gonna be pretty hard to sort of tell when it's happening. I have a feeling it's just gonna create more confusion than people actually using it intentionally. They'll just be like, oh, whoa, what just exploded behind me if they set off a tripwire mine with it or something. So uh, I'm curious to see how that plays out in the long run. It sounds a little bit like hokey game design, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. As for the rest of the chapter six progression tree, not including the weekly unlocks, there's some decent skins at higher levels. I think the snake bite weapon skins actually look kind of cool. Um, and then there's some all right US and Japanese skins that you'll get later. Of course, you get the elite skin for the Japanese elite character and she comes with her own uh, melee weapon unlock if you complete the assignment. One thing I'm really not a fan of seeing on these progression trees are the different hairstyles. To me, they seem so basic. A lot of them are really ugly in my opinion. And it also just seems like content that probably should just be included with the base game and not uh, thrown out there as some sort of unlocked reward because it all just seems so basic. But then again, that's just me. Maybe there's other people out there that are super excited by normal haircuts as being your unlock reward. Beyond that, what we're getting for the remaining 11 weeks of weekly unlocks is still a little bit of an unknown. There was a temper yell leak uh, a couple days ago that suggested there was a different kind of flare gun coming to the game, so maybe we'll see some gadgets or other items showing up in the weekly unlocks. Still too soon to tell in terms of the specific things we're getting. Uh, and I imagine some of it, maybe DICE doesn't even know at this point. Now to wrap up what we've gotten in chapter six so far, I like all the weapons that it's added to the game. The M2 is fun, the shotgun is fun, the Type 11 LMG is decent. I like using it. The lunge mine adds a lot of fun to the game. Not necessarily the most effective weapon in the world, but it is really fun to use, especially when you get a good hit. Uh, the bazooka is going to be very effective. 
but for 12 weeks of content, it seems pretty light, especially considering it seems like it's all getting paired up with just one new map. Hopefully that's not the case and we'll see some more content coming down the line. But again, DICE has been pretty tight lipped about what kind of future content Battlefield 5 is getting. So all we can do is sit and wait, but the content we got today is pretty good. So you might want to check it out. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.